This is the Kilt Father, Mark Gunn, and Firefly is one of the most beloved projects from the mind of Joss Whedon, the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It came out in 2002 and was canceled after only 14 episodes. It developed such an incredible cult following that in 2005 a movie was released based on the TV series. The show inspired me so much that I released a CD with Bedlam Bards called Firefly Drinking Songs. Now I have a new album out for brown coats called As Long As I'm Flying, and you can buy it at fireflydrinkingsongs.com. So how did Firefly go from a canceled TV show to a new album 16 years after it was released? I'll tell you all about it right now. I was first introduced to Firefly just a few short months before the movie was released. I remember binge watching the DVDs. I absolutely loved the show. It had a realness to it that appealed to me, despite being a sci-fi Western. Firefly became my all-time favorite show ever, and it hasn't really budged from that standing since. I still watch it regularly. I don't consider myself an ambitious songwriter, though, and I don't write a lot of songs. I write slowly, and I'm usually, quote-unquote, inspired by something. I never planned to start a genre of Firefly drinking songs. It just sort of happened. And it all started in 2007. I was on the first Brobden Nagging Bards tour of Ireland. I got an email from a fan telling me there was a songwriting contest called Sing a Song for Saffron. Saffron was a nefarious woman who was featured twice in the series. She first appears in Our Mrs. Reynolds, where she sneakily marries the captain of the Firefly ship Serenity. She then attempts to seduce him. When that fails, her true purpose is revealed, leading the crew to their deaths to steal their ship. Saffron appears again later in the episode Trash. She works with the crew to steal a famous laser gun. She attempts to double-cross the crew, only to find they are ready for her duplicity. Beautiful and seductive, Saffron is a favorite side character. So there I was in Ireland when I get an email from a fan that said, you should write a song for this contest. I was immediately struck with a parody idea using the traditional Irish melody, May Morning Dew. So I submitted my song, She Said Her Name Was Saffron, to the contest. A week after returning from Ireland, the song won the Best Parody Award. A few months later, I sang that song for the Signal Firefly podcast for a live event at DragonCon. I had no further plans to write more Firefly songs, even if I wanted to. But a, a year later, I was driving back to DragonCon when I was struck with another idea. I had just watched the episode Janestown, and the crew lands on Higgins Moon, a town that sells mud. And the crew is hired to transport contraband off planet. And one of the crew, Jane Cobb, warns about how he had trouble with a local magistrate a few years back. We soon learn that Jane has become a folk hero of the town, complete with a statue and his own protest song, Hero of Canton. That song, of course, is a favorite among brown coats, and every one of us longs to have a mug of mutter's milk and sing along. But as I was driving back to Dragon Con, I wondered... What other songs might have been heard in that little pub in Canton? So I wrote one. The song was called Monaghan's Mutter's Milk, and I wrote it as a sort of Woody Guthrie-style protest against the challenges faced by the mutters of Higgins Moon. The song was super important to me, first because it sort of solidified what would eventually become my most popular musical niche, uh, sci-fi drinking songs. But it was also the launching point for Firefly Drinking Songs, and my newest album, As Long As I'm Flying. It was around this time that the idea of recording a CD of Firefly drinking songs began. I set up concerts at Gen Con and Dragon Con dedicated to this theme. Each show was packed. We were turning people away. It was brilliant. (laughs) The atmosphere of the show was amazing, too. I really wanted to capture that feel, so I decided on recording a live CD. I wanted to feel like you were in that little pub in Canton. Now, my biggest challenge was that I didn't have enough songs to create an album. So I turned to someone who did, the Bedlam Bards. Uh, they were the first to release a full CD of Firefly music. It was, it was called On the Drift, music inspired by Firefly and Serenity. The, the album captured everything that people love about Firefly and the fandom, and it's absolutely fantastic. Cedric is the primary songwriter for the group, and when I called him up to ask if he'd be willing to make an album with me, he was totally psyched. We spent a few months performing... Firefly drinking songs at various venues and conventions and trying to capture an amazing live recording. And it finally happened at a church in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, My friend Jan Sinkush booked that for us and it had the energy, the sound. It was just fantastic. So we released the CD and it quickly became one of the most popular albums. Once again, I had no plans for a follow-up CD. 
I was trying to get out of doing themed CDs. Most of my 20 plus albums are themed in some way. Some are Irish, some are about cats, some are sci-fi. And while themed CDs are definitely easier to sell, because all I have to do is say, here's the theme, which do you like? They are much more difficult and costly to produce. So when I wrote a song called Bring Me Home Boys, a song based on the episode The Message, where a body is mailed to the crew with a message to bring his body home to his family, I didn't put it on a Firefly CD, nor did I put the song Brown Coats Keep Flying. Um, that's a song I co-wrote with Reese Sheridan Rose. Though I did put it on sci-fi drinking songs. Okay, I went themed af- after all. Again, I had no plans to record another Firefly album despite its success. But one year at Gen Con, I was singing Close Your Eyes. This is a song by Daniel Glasser and many call it The Demon Lullaby. And I have a whole podcast episode about that, that song. I'll link to it in the show notes. In the middle of the song, I changed the lyrics to the reavers beneath your bed are going to eat your face and the crowd erupted in laughter. And for the next few years, Brown Coats asked when I would put that song on a CD. In 2016, I set a milestone on Patreon. If I reached that goal, I would record a four song EP of Firefly songs exclusively for patrons. And I quickly hit the goal. But as I started recording the EP, more songs came out. So I asked Ree Sheridan Rose, a longtime songwriting collaborator, to send me more lyrics, and she did. Next thing I know, I had a full album of brown coat drinking songs. I launched a Kickstarter, and the rest is kind of history. <laughs> now, one of the things I sort of glossed over earlier is the Firefly Drinking Songs show. And this show took on a life of its own. When I started, I was just singing songs about Firefly, but I wanted something bigger. I wanted something more inclusive. See, I have long been a part of the reenacting shows. Most notably, of course, are the Renaissance festivals. At fairs, you're encouraged to not just play music. They want you to be a part of the atmosphere, to recreate the Renaissance. And early on, I absolutely loved fairs for that reason. I could pretend I was in the Renaissance. But the simple fact is, I'm not an actor. So keeping that going all day long was a bit exhausting and tedious. So I took on a new character that was basically me. Um, That made it a lot easier to make it last throughout the day with a slight modification of some weird accent. I don't know what it is. (laughs) I think that's why I love the Firefly drinking song show so much. I don't, I don't usually write about things I love like Firefly. I prefer to write as if I'm part of the world. Firefly is the epitome of this. The music I wrote was as if I was living in the Firefly verse. The show was created as if I was a touring musician singing songs for brown coats. The show is about an hour long, and with any luck, the one at Gen Con this year will be about an hour and a half. But for that period of time, it's easy to stay in character, and so that's what I do. My family is all from East Texas, so I put on my Texas accent and step into a world where people are on the fringe of civilized society. They're looking for an escape. They want to hear music that celebrates the independents who lost the Unification War. They want to escape the hard life of working in the mud pits. For an hour, they are a part of that. And we sing songs about the Hero of Canton, Blue Sun, Reavers, and the Brown Coats. It's absolutely incredible. It's been 16 years since Firefly was started and canceled, yet new Brown Coats are made every day as they discover this incredible show. And one of my dreams is actually to take the Firefly Drinking Song show on the road. I want to unite Brown Coats once again for a shindig among shindigs and an inspired passion to keep building the verse because, to quote Mao, We have done the impossible, and that makes us mighty. If you're interested in my new album, As Long As I'm Flying, or the Firefly Drinking Songs show, please visit FireflyDrinkingSongs.com. You can buy the album, listen on Spotify, find cool merch, and learn more about the show. I'd love to hear about your favorite characters or episodes, and you can post that in the show notes. I should point out that the physical CD will be available only in March, and if you like CDs, then you should order it as soon as possible. Thank you so much for listening. Kelt Father Music and Travel is produced by Mark Gunn. If you enjoyed this episode, then please join the Gunrunners Club on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, you will help release more music, podcasts, videos, and more. For $5 a month, you can own the new album, along with a bunch of bonus content. Head on over to markgunn.net for more details. And would you like 21 songs for free? Plus get regular updates of what's new. Subscribe to the podcast and newsletter at keltfather.com. Thanks so much for listening. Slancha.